Little Red Riding Hood gets told to pay old grandma a visit in the middle of the night going through the dark scary forest. That's when a scary stranger approaches her, promising that he is a good friend. When things only go worse from then on, when the little girl notices butchered corpses of animals, with one who is still living, telling her to run away before it is too late. He did it. You need to run. Get out of here as fast as you can. Go now. Ow, 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 ow. Hi folks, I'm R, your narrator, uh, and welcome to Little Red Riding Hood Analog Horror, which tales a darker version of the story. Red Riding Hood is an old European story which has been referenced several times with some of the more popular writings originating from France by someone called Charles Perrault and to Germany written by the renowned brothers Grimm. The original story is a lot more grim, no puns intended, compared to the modern iterations. The analog horror stays more faithful to the original iterations of this fairy tale or otherwise labeled as folklores, where the big bad wolf doesn't spare anyone in the story. One fateful night, the mother of Little Red Riding Hood asks her to take a basket full of candies and sweets to the grandma who lives on the other side of the forest. It's unclear what period this video takes place in, but as they are living a pretty rural life, living in cabins in the forest, it could be in early to mid 1900s. Hey honey, I have some bad news about your grandma. She's sick and needs you to take this basket of candies to her. It's really questionable to what kind of sickness the grandma has and what do these candies contain which alleviate her sickness? Does she have an addiction to candies that she would get crazy withdrawals without or are these candies a slang for uh, something else? It would be more logical to think the so-called candies are medication that grandma needs. But for a young Red Riding Hood, the mother describes them as candies. Mother gives Little Red Riding Hood the basket full of candies to take to grandma's cabin, yet asking her to ensure not to talk to any strangers on the way, especially as it is very late at night. It is already strange enough that grandma needs candies for feeling sick. It gets even worse that Little Red Riding Hood has to do it all alone by herself in the dark forest, so late at night. Either way, the plot is doing Little Red Riding Hood dirty and we have no choice but to go along with it. Lucky for Riding Hood, she has a handy flashlight which she uses to light her way to navigate to grandma's house. As she carefully navigates through the dark woods, she sees recently butchered animals who are half devoured. He did it. You need to run. Get out of here as fast as you can. Go now. Ow, 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 ow. The animals butchered seem to be a bear, a fox, and a rabbit who seem badly injured. The rabbit at the brink of death, trying to save Little Red Riding Hood, explains that someone did this to them and that Riding Hood needs to run as fast as she can and get out of here. Whoever did this to them doesn't seem to discriminate whom it devours and kills, being a menacing predator. If this mysterious person managed to kill a predator like a bear, it's clear it would have no issues or problems killing a little human girl. That's when the very culprit appears behind Red Riding Hood with the girl not daring to turn back to look. It is none other than the abnormally and ungodly large big bad wolf. The wolf is cunning and enjoys playing with his prey before killing them, who slowly approaches Little Red Riding Hood and blocks her way, teasing and taunting her. I will only be what may do here at this forest at this time. Telling me 
The wolf introduces himself as Mr. Wolf, tricking the little girl to trust them as he is to be her new friend and hence they wouldn't be strangers anymore. Which means what the mother said of not talking to strangers wouldn't apply here anymore. Little Red Riding Hood being terrified of the big Mr. Wolf, knowing deep down that he is not to be trusted, understands that she is in a dire situation and she should probably play along to survive this encounter. Despite all that, she doesn't think ahead, being too scared to think straight, and rightfully so, being a little girl to outsmart adults when she answers to the wolf that she is going to the grandma's house as she is sick and vulnerable, giving the wolf the address and the direction. The wolf seeing this as a golden opportunity to prey on an old vulnerable grandma thanks Little Red Riding Hood and sits on his way. On that note, the wolf leaves the little girl with a basket full of questionable candies, walking fast towards the grandma's house, arriving there before Little Red Riding Hood. Who is knocking on my door at this hour? I hope it's my granddaughter bringing me candy. Who's there? That's when the wolf reveals itself, who managed to mimic the granddaughter's voice almost perfectly. Well enough to trick the grandma, who with a menacing smile slowly approaches the poor grandma who is horrified by the sight of the savage predator, begging it to stay away. But this only pleases the wolf more, who approaches the grandma and kills her in a savage and brutal manner, as he enjoys seeing his praise in fear and pain. All poor grandma wanted was some sweet candies to soothe her pain due to the sickness. The perspective changes to Little Red Riding Hood, who is worried and concerned about the grandma, yet trying to stay safe and navigate through the dark forest, still walking a few minutes away. That's when all of a sudden, the savage big bad wolf manages to somehow be so fast to appear behind her. Don't look back. Back where he started, ready to pounce at the little girl. Red Riding Hood only notices the wolf when it is already too late. no salvation for her. He teases the little girl without being direct that the grandma is already dead and there is not much that she can do anymore. Weirdly, he doesn't attack her directly, knowing she is already his prey, wanting to enjoy his time with her a little more for entertainment. Leaving the wolf who just stands there in the middle of the dark forest, Little Red Riding Hood runs towards Grandma's house, seeing her door as left open. Worried to what is going on, she steps in carefully, noticing how all the lights are turned off, with the house being awfully silent. Scared from the wolf, knowing he doesn't have any good intentions, she sees him peeking through the window, just smiling at her, and then disappearing. She quickly tries to find grandma and hide in order to be safe from the wolf. Calling out to the grandma with no answer, she continues inspecting and searching the place when eventually she opens a door, seeing grandma being in a corner, shrouded in darkness. She slowly turns her flashlight on her when she notices that she is brutally mauled and attacked, having lost her life. Shocked to what she is seeing, the big bad wolf who has been playing with her and stalking her appears from behind the corpse of Grandma. Yeah, yeah. 
spring is gone. Now it's your turn. The wolf turns and scares the little girl that the grandma is gone and now it'll be her turn. Having enough chasing and stalking her, feeling as if it is the right time to devour her and kill her. That's unfortunately the end for the little girl who in her last moments thinks about her mother and if she will be safe against this horrifying large wolf. As the life leaves her body, someone who simply wanted to give some sweet, delicious candies to her grandma in the middle of the forest, the wolf sits on his way to end the bloodline with the mother, tracking back the same way little Red Riding Hood took to get here. The wolf manages to find the mother, starting to peek through the window and taunt her the same way before he attacks and kills her too. It seems as if the big bad wolf wasn't simply hungry killing all these people and animals, but it seems as if he enjoyed the hunt and preying on vulnerable victims. He didn't even kill them fully, he just savagely mauled them and injured them. He enjoyed hunting and scaring them, building up the fear as a way to entertain himself. It's safe to say he was absolutely psychotic and thirsty for blood and the kill. Taking the life of so many at the same time would simply make them even go bad and rot, not having enough time to eat all of them. Big Bad Wolf single-handedly disrupted the ecosystem, almost making every species go extinct, how he enjoys just killing and hunting. If he continues his ways, he would surely run out of food and praise to hunt and eat. And that is it for this video folks. If you enjoyed it, make sure to stay tuned for more by hitting on the subscribe button and the notification bell. As always, it's been your host Star, and I will see you on the next one. Have a fantastic day.